In the early hours of September 21st, Chance went live for a very short stream, saying that he would normally be, quote, going off, but instead speaking in a quiet, somber tone of voice. Chance noted that his reason for being quiet was that he had a family member staying over as a guest. He then made it known that he had been sent a sex toy in the mail by someone using the alias Tragedy. Chance expressed disgust for what he had been sent, calling it both unclassy and undignified, and saying that he would have sent it back to the sender if he had their address. It's worth noting that this took place just hours after Chance claimed that he would no longer be doing live streams. On Norm, I would be hopping on a live and going off about this incident, and I would have every right to do so. But seeing as I have a family member over here as a guest, I am going to keep my calm and I'm not going to, you know, do like I normally wouldn't go off, even though I would have ever, understandably every reason to do so. But I just received a package in the mail today from somebody named Tragedy. Now, if this person named Tragedy is who I think it is, you're seriously fucked up for once you sent me. If you guys don't know, the person sent me a fucking sex toy. Like, I really need a goddamn sex toy, bro. I don't need that garbage. Alright, I don't... I don't need garbage like that. So, you know what I did? I'm going to show up with you. I threw it away. I don't need garbage like that in my house. Neither does my family. That's repulsive. It's unclassy. It's undignified. And quite honestly, it's fucking disgusting. How dare you send something like that to my house? You're lucky I don't have your address. Otherwise, I would have fucking sent it right back to you and told you to piss off. But unfortunately, I don't have your address, so I can't very well do that. But I am going to say this, you're very fucked up in the head for that. You really are. You're very fucked up in the head for doing that. That's garbage. It's unclassy. It's tasteless. And it's gross. Chance went live again a while later, saying that he was going to tie up a loose end, specifying that William Glory Hole was said loose end. He claimed that he was trying to better his life, which he wasn't, and informed William that if he wanted Chance to, he would host a panel and allow William to join and hash things out with him. He explained that William had been messaging his Facebook friends to inform them of his predatory actions and other unsavory antics. He also said that William had informed him of the Kiwi Farms page detailing his antics, which Chance incorrectly claimed did not exist. Chance lying, claimed that he had proven that his exposure at the hands of Masshole Reports had been a lie, saying that he was innocent because she had approached him. I need to tie up a loose end. A loose end that I've been ignoring for a while now. And that loose end's name is William Glory Hole. Bro. What's your deal? Like, what's your deal, William Glory Hole? William, I'm over here trying to better my life, bro. Like, if, I don't get it, man. I really don't get it. Like, if you're trying to get my attention, well, you fucking got it. And, like, if you want to set up a fucking live stream, 
and hop on. Bro, I'll set up a fucking stream because if you got a problem with me, man, hop on a fucking panel and we'll fucking settle it, bro. Hop on a goddamn panel and we'll settle it. Because I'm honestly tired of this shit, man. Like, I'll wake up this morning, start the revamping of my channel, start resetting it up. You know, I start, you know, renovating my channel. And what do I get? A bunch of my friends fucking saying... Yeah. But I get a bunch of my friends saying that you're there messaging them and shit and saying this and saying that. Like, bro. Like, if you got a problem with me, hop on panel and we'll fucking settle it, bro. That don't mean you gotta fucking message my damn friends, dude. Like, don't be a fucking bitch. If you got a problem with me, hop on panel and fucking say something, dude. I'll gladly start up a fucking panel for you to hop on. That's not a fucking problem, dude. But, bro, you gotta stop going after my friends. Stop saying this and saying that. Oh, and by the way, I checked Kiwi Farms. There ain't jack shit on there. You saying that you posted this and that on there? It was a fucking lie, bro. I checked. There ain't jack shit on there. You're full of crap. Like, dude, I'm over here trying to better my life. While you're over here trying to do... I don't, I don't know what you're trying to do. Like, whatever you're trying to do, it's not working because half my friends know that you're a fucking troll. Like, just give it up, dude. Like, if you want to talk, man, I can start up a motherfucking panel. You can hop on and whatever motherfucking issues you got with me, we can fucking talk about it. Because I done proved the other day that all this mass old shit is a fucking farce, dude. I already proved that mass old reports fucking came up and approached me, which makes me innocent. And everyone knows that. While, yes, I can't clean about what I did and what happened, at the end of the day, she approached me, which makes me in the clear. So, I don't know what the fuck your deal is with me, man. I already proved my innocence. Base Shaman proved my innocence. I proved my own innocence the other night when I finally laid everything to rest. So, I don't know what the fuck your deal is, man. Like, if you got a fucking issue with me, hop on the panel we'll fucking, you know, drop your fucking complaint in the goddamn box and we'll fucking talk about it. Let's motherfucking talk about it, dude, because I'm honestly sick of the crap. Later in the day, Chance began another stream, saying that William Gloryhole had requested that he go live so that they could panel up together. Chance, displaying his ability to act like an adult, put his guitar over his non-existent shoulders, advising the viewers that he would be playing it loudly if William said anything that he didn't like. Chance repeatedly insulted William and played guitar badly, urging him repeatedly to join the panel. William was in the chat for the majority of the stream, pretending that he did not see the link to the panel in an attempt to rile up Chance. Chance continued going back and forth between playing guitar covers and insulting William for around an hour. Alright y'all, so this douchebag really wants me to start up a stream, so we're going to do that. And I got something for you. I'm about to outclass this dude and out troll this motherfucker. Because what he don't realize is every time this douchebag, 
every time this douchebag says something stupid or out of line, guess what's getting cranked on? Guess what is getting a motherfucking crank on? Come on, dumb fuck. Bring your fucking ass up here, bro. You want to talk shit on the phone? Bring your bitch ass up here, bro. Bring your pussy ass up here, glory hole, bitch. But yo, William Glory Hole. Link's right there, motherfucker. Bring your ass up here. You wanted to hash this out, motherfucker? Let's go. Cause if you don't, I'll just start playing a fucking song. I'll pull up fucking YouTube and start playing a damn song, bro. So, what's it gonna be? You gonna jump up in here, or do I get to do a show for these people? What are you, fucking blind? There's the link. No, not him. I'm sorry, but nobody but that little douchebag is getting on here, y'all. So, William, get your ass up here. Ain't nobody but William getting on this motherfucking panel, bro. Ain't nobody but William Glory Hole getting on this panel. Come on, motherfucker. I'm calling you out. You wanted me to make this panel? Get the fuck up here, bitch. Get the motherfuck up here, you fucking reject. Come on, bro. You wanted me to make this goddamn panel? Come the fuck up here. The link's right the fuck there, douchebag. So bring your ass up here, motherfucker. Come on, doggy. Come on, bitch boy. Come on, what? Come on. Bring your ass up on stream. Come on, boy. We know you can do it. Come on. Let's go, doggy. Come on. Let's go. Come on, boy. Come on. Bring your pussy ass on stream. Come on. Come on, bring your ass on stream. What a fucking pussy. You wanted me to make the stream? Bring your fake ass up here, you fucking douche. Another stream began later that evening, with Chance saying that he was sick of YouTube and the trolling that he had received on the platform. He said that he had been targeted for, quote, no reason over the past year and a half, which was incorrect as the trolling had been going strong for nearly three years by this point. He then called the trolls homophobic slurs and urged them to end their own lives, stressing that he was sick of the treatment that he had received. He also claimed that he had nearly been killed multiple times, which was a lie. He then threatened to cook and cannibalize the trolls, seconds after claiming that they had said disgusting things to him. This is not something that I planned on, to be honest with you. I was not planning on this. But, to be honest, I'm tired of YouTube. I'm tired of the, of the disgusting cesspool of trolling that it's become. I'll be straight up honest with you, for the last year and a half, I have become a target for no reason. I have had murder attempts put on me. I have had murder attempts put out on me. I have had disgusting and repulsive packages sent to me. And to be honest, I've done nothing but stress the fuck out. All because of you fucking trolls that think that it's funny that you want to act like you own me. But you don't own me. See, I'm my own person. I'm my own fucking person. And to be honest with you, I'm tired of the negativity. I'm tired of the hatred. I'm tired of being bashed on. And to be quite honestly, 
I'm tired of being put on the edge of suicide because of you motherfuckers. I'm seriously sick of it. All you guys do is attack me and bully me for no reason other than to make yourselves feel like you're a badass. But really, you're nothing more than a bunch of low-life, bitch-ass, crack-headed little faggots who need to jump off a bridge and fucking die. I'll say it right now. You motherfuckers need to slit your goddamn throats and die already. You'd be doing the world a fucking favor if you did. Point being, I'm tired of the troll shit. I'm sick of it. I don't fucking need it. For the past year and a half, I have been a target for you motherfuckers. And for no reason. And it's bullshit, bro. It's fucking bullshit, man. I mean, I've had murder attempts on me twice in a row... Because you motherfuckers by a psycho ex of mine who truly is psychotic. I've been framed for shit. I've had disturbing and disgusting shit sent to me. My family's lives have been put in danger. And to be honest, I'm sick of it. I am truly sick of it. You motherfuckers need to get a fucking life. You need to grow the fuck up and get a motherfucking life and leave mine the fuck alone. Because you guys do not own me. You might think you do, but you don't. You're a bunch of low-life, fat-ass slobs. You don't even deserve to be called humans. If I could have my way, you know what I would do? I would chop every single one of you motherfuckers up and fry you up like motherfucking bacon and eat you for fucking breakfast, bitch. Every one of you, I would fucking murder you trolls. I would straight out kill every one of you, chop you up and fry you up like motherfucking bacon and eat your ass for fucking breakfast because none of you motherfuckers deserve to live. You're not human. You're garbage. You're trash. You're a bunch of motherfucking low-life pussies that have nothing better to do than to sit behind a goddamn keyboard running your mouth all day like a fucking bitch. And I'm tired of it. I'm tired of being attacked. I'm tired of being bullied. I'm tired of having murder attempts put out on me. I'm tired of being made out to be something that I'm not. I'm tired of everybody saying, oh, you're a pedophile. No, the fuck I'm not. All right? I'm really not. Chance only streamed one time on the 22nd in the early hours of the morning. He fake cried for a while before announcing that he was, yet again, leaving YouTube. He then angrily berated the trolls and told them to leave him alone even arguing with people in the chat who dared to question him, urging them to have ancestral relationships with their dead relatives. He claimed that the trolls deserved to be burnt alive and hung from trees before addressing Masshole reports and repeatedly insulting her, blaming her for running him off the internet. He also called out Schmeckelcat briefly before turning his attention back to Masshole reports and saying that she deserved to have her life violently ended. Next, he called out Tyree Sneed, angrily claiming that he could rap better than Tyree and calling him a user and an abuser before turning his attention to Jasmine Monique and Crypt K, who he called homophobic slurs before claiming that he possessed no musical talent. This went on for over an hour. Oh, I'm going to say this, but before I say what I have to say, you motherfuckers are going to listen. Don't you dare take this as me coming back because I'm not coming back to this hell. I am not coming back to YouTube. 
I'm not doing it. So don't think for one fucking second that I'm coming back to this hellhole because I want to. I don't want to be here. But I have no fucking choice. You fucking psychotic little bitch ass trolls. Need to fuck off. And leave me alone. Oh, yes, the fuck I have, bitch. Why do you think I deleted my channel, you little sick bitch? You sick little piece of garbage. Hey, Mary, why don't you have to suck your dead dad's dick, you little bitch? Why don't you go have to suck your grandpa's dick like the little slut that you are, bitch? I'm here to expose everyone, you motherfucking trolls. Everyone from Tyree's need to mass home reports. And everyone that has ever fucking come after me. It's time you fucking paid the goddamn price for what you put me through. Every one of you deserves to be in motherfucking hell. Every one of you deserves to burn alive. Every one of you deserves to hang by your fucking necks from a goddamn tree for what you put me and my friends and my family through. Starting with you, Masshole Reports, a.k.a. the world's fattest bitch. The world's biggest fucking slut. You're the whole reason I'm in this fucking mess. You're the whole goddamn reason I was forced to leave. You want to sit there and act like a badass, but you're not. I'm exposing your bitch ass because you ain't got the fucking balls to fucking do it. The shit you did to me, you've been arrested for three times before. Three fucking times you've been arrested for this shit. But yet, you don't care. You had your kids taken from you because of it. But you don't care. You don't give a fuck, bitch. And Schmeckle Cat, you... You're a little piece of shit. You're a no life having fucking wannabe. All you are is a backstabbing little bitch. And Massel reports, why don't you come clean, you little fucking bitch? You approached me first out of nowhere. You approached me. I did not in any way approach you. You enticed me, you little fucking bitch. And you know you did. You know you approached me first. Why? Because you're a sick little freak. You're a sick bitch that deserves a slit her fucking neck and fucking die. For the whole fucking world to see. The whole world deserves to see you bleed out of your goddamn neck, bitch. And Tyrese Need. The little bitch who thinks he's a badass. But really, you're not, kid. You're a piece of shit. You think you can rap, bitch, I can rap circles around you all goddamn day in my sleep. And you know it. You're a fucking user and an abuser. And as for you little bitches, up in mass hole reports, Fucking shit. Oh, including Jasmine, Monique, and Crypt, the bitch, the faggot, the wannabe rapper K. Let's start with you, Crypt, the bitch. You think you're a rapper, but you're not. 
sucked. You ain't shit. You're dick riding, no talent having little bitch. And you use people to springboard off of all so you can promote your trash ass, bitch ass, no talent having music. That's all you do. The following day, Chance went live, making it known that he was seeking answers, but clarifying that his stream would have nothing to do with the trolls. He then immediately addressed the Bender Boys, who were in fact trolls, asking how they had found him and what their end goal in bothering him was. He then briefly paused to hide a negative comment in chat and have Crypt K hidden as well, before banning someone named Mary for daring to question him, telling her that she should be quiet if she did not understand his predicament. Members of chat also suggested that the Boy Blue, or Juggalo Drama Alert, had exposed the Bender Boys to Chance, which Chance denied. Um, as you guys know, I built this channel a couple months back to be able to express myself through my music, my poetry, and my artistry. But there's also another reason why I made this channel to seek understanding and to seek answers to questions that many of us may have. And I have a couple of very serious questions that do not involve the trolls. This is something that I've wanted to know for over a year and a half. And this question is aimed at the Bender Boys and those that were around during the time of the Real Mystery Nicole's YouTube channel, people like the Bender Boys. Um, to the Bender Boys, I just want to know this. Why? Well, first of off, I want to know how did you guys even find me like how did you guys even find me to begin with like who were you guys connected with to you know drag me into that stuff that you drug me into but second off I want to know why is it that you felt I was a target for you. You know, like, I'm not mad. I just, I want, I guess what I'm seeking is the answers as to why you guys, the Bender Boys, targeted me and basically felt like you had to drag me into all this stuff that led me down the road that I went down. Like, I'm not angry, I'm not mad. I just want understanding as to why. Like, what was your reason for, you know, dragging me into this pit of being trolled for over a year and a half? Like, what was the point? And what was your, and most importantly, what was your end goal for me to get drug into this? Like, what was your end goal in all of this? What was the point and the reasoning behind it? Like, I genuinely would like to know. Hi, that comment. Hi, Kurt K. And Mary, trust me, this goes far back before you. Like, I didn't want to have to ban you, Mary, but Mary, the, I'm going to say this, and I'm going to say this in the nicest way possible. If you don't know what you speak about on a subject, then you need to keep your mouth quiet. Okay? You don't know what you're talking about. This goes back before you. 
This is not directed at you. This is directed at the vendor boys and at those that originally started all this. But here's the thing. I didn't know I didn't know Boy Blue before the Vendor Boys. I met Blue after the Vendor Boys. Later that day, Chance paneled up with Siznak, one of the Bender Boys, to ask the same questions that he had asked earlier. Siznak claimed that Courtney, Chance's online acquaintance, had paid each of the Bender Boys five thousand dollars to troll him, which Chance immediately denied causing Siznak to confirm that they had discovered him after he had appeared on a panel with the boy Blue, after all. He also said that their supposed record label had begun attempting to sign Chance after seeing how much money Music Biz Marty had made selling merchandise featuring his likeness. Siznak blamed his actions on his addiction to the drug PCP, also claiming that he had been employed by Marty to assist in merch sales. The two then discussed the early days of the trolling involving Jamie, Nicole, and Marty, with Chance proclaiming that Marty had a lot to answer for as well. Eventually, Siznak claimed that Chance owed him money as a check he had supposedly received had bounced. Chance seemingly was very confused by this and claimed ignorance, which Siznak responded to by calling him a cash cow and making it known that whoever controlled him would become rich. Chance claimed that he would not be controlled and that the Bender Boys had failed at derailing his career which Siznak challenged, asking how his career was going. Chance, of course, claimed that it was going well, which was a lie. They then debated the validity of the record contract Chance had been presented with in 2019, which sparked an argument that persisted until the stream ended. As you might have assumed by now, this is a pretty lengthy clip. What's up, Cyrax? Hey, how you doing, man? What's good? Nothing. So I heard you got some questions that you need answers to. Yeah, like, and honestly, the main one, dude, is just how is it that, well, one, how is it that you guys found me? And two and three are why is it that y'all did what you did to me? And what made you guys want to do that ultimately? Courtney like, gave us all to do it. Courtney paid like, us all well, to do it. Like, who paid you to do it? Courtney, she gave me five grand to do it. And Dude. she gave all the rest of the Bender Boys five grand each. Says not listen, bro. You and I both know that. And, and I'm not holding anything over your head. I'm not, you know, hating on you. But you and I both know that I know you well enough that I can tell when you're lying through your teeth. And right now, you're not being straight up with me. What was the real reason? And don't sit there and say it's only a page. I want an honest answer. No bullshit. How we found you? I'm pretty sure it was through Blue when he brought you up about the whole Candle Smith thing. And then we found out you were a rapper. So then, um, uh, Max and CPN and the Juggernauti wanted to get you signed. And so Max had me and George, and I don't even remember who else, a couple of us uh, hook up with Mew so that we could let you know that Max was a good guy and you can record your Weirdo and Mars album or whatever it was, right? Yeah, but what I want to know... And then, and just, oh, yeah, because at that time, too, Marty was making big money off of your... the glory holes off of the merchandise off of you. Which I still don't see how the hell he could have even... Well, I mean, I didn't see how he could have done it. I just don't understand why, and quite frankly. I, so, would not, I would not care to know, Marty, just saying. Max and CPM <laughs> no saw the money that Marty was making off of you on merchandise alone. So that's when Max wanted to get you signed to Juggernauty Records. Had us start hooking up with you. To... But, then, but then why was it that, like, ultimately, why was it that you guys pulled that fake contract stuff? Like, what was, Well, like... it wasn't fake. That was a real contract. And yeah. the Bender Boys, the Bender Boys saw how much money 
they could make off of you. And that's why they stole you from Juggernauty Records. And then uh, I developed a really bad PCP habit. And that's when Marty started offering me money to sell your merchandise. So I was making a shitload of money off of Marty. And he was buying me a lot of PCP to sell your merchandise. And then you turned on us. You just became unmanageable. Well, to be fair, dude, I will admit, I was dealing with a lot of, you know, pressure between, you know, being trolled, being attacked, and this and that and the other. Like, it got a lot to, you know, it got overwhelming a lot. And like I said, I hold, you know, I harbor no hatred towards you or anyone. You know, like I said, I came on here just to, you know, to basically get answers and be like, yo, like, I want to put all this to rest so that I can actually move on with my life so that I actually know, you know, what way, you know, I can take things. And now that I got those answers, dude, I do appreciate it. But ultimately, though, how are I'm we even doing- being, how are we even being brought up right now is what I'm curious about. Because of the fact that, you know, I was just genuinely like, you know, looking for answers because I was actually talking about it with a friend of mine and they were wondering the same thing. Like, how did any of this even start? Like, what started all this stuff with, you know, the trolling and stuff? And then, you know, I admit that it started with you. Well, it initially first started with Marty before you guys. Like, it started with Marty before you guys. He fell off the map after a while. And then, you know, somehow or other, I guess, Jamie found me or whatever. And I kind of explained, like, all of that stuff. And they were like, you know, like, you should seriously, you know, try to get some answers. And, you know, see what you can find out, you know. And, you know, that way, you know, things can finally, you know, progress forward. And... And, you know, a good way. And honestly, dude, I do appreciate you coming up here and, you know, explaining everything. And now that I know the real truth, Marty, you got some answering to do, man. It wasn't even Marty. It was it was all the juggernauti. They were the ones. I was talking about about Marty with like the whole, you know, glory hole thing and all that, like all that stuff. Yeah, the like. Yeah, but like, Marty was making tons of money. Um, from what I recall, you still owe me some money from that merchandise. That's but I, I've let that go. I, I realize I'm never going to get that money. But something I want to know is how is it that I owe you money when I had no idea about the stuff? I didn't know about that until y'all told me. I was unaware. I, so I, I was don't know, but when when my last check bounced. I was told to bring it up with you. Dude, I honest, I'll be honest with you, dude. And this is me being 100 straight up with you, man. I had no idea about anything that Marty was doing at the time until y'all told me. When y'all told me, I straight flipped on him. I was like, what the fuck? Like, what's the, like, why did you you know, do this. Like, what was the fucking point? Like, the I had no idea is, about... It was all I about money, Cyrus. We all wanted that mighty dollar. Right, and I get that, and I understand You're a cash cow. Do you not understand that? No, like, I get that, but I don't understand, like, why... Why... why whoever, they do whoever, that? whoever gets control of you is rich. By but God, they are video. rich. But that's the thing, though, man. That's what people don't really understand is that I don't want to be controlled. I want to be my own person without people coming in and doing this and doing that and saying this and saying, like, oh, you can do this, but, oh, you can't do that. Like, that's not me, you know? When I first came onto the music scene, dude, I had no intention of being controlled. I just wanted to be able to do my music my own way, on my own, without any, you know, without any bullshit, without anybody trying to, 
you know, control what I do and don't do and make me look stupid. Like, I'm not about that crap, dude. Like, that's not what I'm about. I think, and I honestly feel like a lot of people, you know, they don't want that. Like, they want to control me. But I'm here to tell you right now, I'm not going to be controlled. I See, and that's the thing is that's that's why it, it went to where it did it went to where it did because we realized if we can't control you and we can't be making that money off of you then nobody will and we were we well, vowed to destroy you money. after that we made sure that we were going to destroy you because well, and, nobody and, was going to make money off of you if we couldn't make that money off of you well, I had to say it, dude, and I'm not saying this to be an asshole. I'm just stating straight facts. You kind of failed at that. You kind of failed at what you Where's did. your like, career I'm, at right I'm now? Just, oh, shit, I'm just saying facts, bro. Like, Where's your dude, career at right now? Honestly, dude, it's going in a very good direction right now for me. It might not be music, but I do have other shit that I am doing that is actually going in a very good direction for me and i'm here to say right now you're not going to get away in the in the way of that and neither is anyone else i'm not going to be controlled i am my own person and if you, you don't like that then that's your problem i can't control the way you feel or how you well, react but you i can't control what you did to us you signed a contract with us but that's the and thing, after though, you uh, signed the contract with us, we that. we went ahead and bought houses and stuff, relying on that money that was going to come in from you. Then why is it that when I took one look at that contract, I looked at the contract after I had signed it, and bro, that contract was fake. So don't even don't even play that contract. How was it right fake? Now. Tell me how it was fake, bro. You were offering me fucking money that no fucking label in the right fucking mind would do. Like, bro, I'm not stupid. Because it's genius. you. Like, you are a musical fucking genius. And I get that, but you need to understand, dude, when it comes down to it, I never wanted to be controlled. And when I tried to tell y'all that, you guys felt like you had to do this and do that to destroy me when, you know, we, we could have parted ways on good terms. If you don't understand what happened, we went out and bought houses. We went and bought cars. We went and had pools put in our backyard and because Tyrax was going to record, a month, that, record an why, album for us. But why should that matter to me? That's on you because guys. Because like, you backed like, out on the contract. You didn't, but why we should lost that, all that we money? Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. On houses, cars, on, let me ask you this. All right, let me ask you this. Why should what you guys do with your lives affect what I do? It don't because make sense. Like, all it, of it, that it, relies it, on your signature it, on it, that contract. Let me tell you something, bro. All it, of that you, relied on you. But that's the thing, though. That was all on your shoulders. But how is that on me, bro? Like, because we signed that? the contract, which we knew we were instantly going to be rich once you dropped that album. And without you dropping no, that I'm album, sorry, we lost houses, oh. we lost cars, we lost kids. Well, like, that's not a, like, bro, like, it was just it. a crazy like, time. Bro, you really listen, screwed listen, a lot listen, of us. Stop listening, man. Stop listening, bro. All right? If no more prostitutes. No more PCP. Dude, just shut up and listen for a minute. If you wanted to make money, why didn't you just go out and make music for yourself, bro? I'm going to say this one last time, and I am signing out, and I am done. I am no one's punching bag. I am no one's puppet. I am my own person, and I will not be controlled. And if you don't like that, well, then I'm not trying to be offensive when I say this, but screw you. I'm not anyone's puppet, and I'm not going to be controlled. Sorry to say that, man. At some point during the day, Music Biz Marty uploaded an audio message for Chance regarding his earlier conversation with Siznak. Marty said that he no longer wanted to fight with Chance, claiming that Chance had been fighting all of his life, mimicking Chance's own claims regarding his struggles. 
He then discussed the money that he had supposedly made selling glory holes featuring Chance's likeness, saying that Chance should have joined him to make some money before making it known that he had ceased the sale of said items. Marty made it clear that he did not want to control Chance's music or art, but also made a point of reminding Chance that he had purchased his contract from the Bender Boys back in 2019. Marty repeatedly stated that he had been banned from joining Chance on panel through StreamYard before listing the benefits and variety of glory holes that he sold. Marty presented an offer of friendship to Chance before eventually ending his message. So, I caught some of your live streaming earlier today. Uh, bits and pieces. I saw that my former partner, Suznak, was up there. Shout out to Suznak. Congrats on the five days sobriety. I think that this time's probably going to be the one. Just keep believing and you can achieve. Nevertheless, um, I did try to hop on your stream yards but I was banned and I just wanted to have a talk with you. I, I could tell that you were trying to find the origin point of how all this started. And, I, you know, from what I understand, you've been fighting your whole life. As you said, you agreed with me. You have been fighting with Chuck Stiegel. You've been fighting with the Akron school system. You've been fighting with everybody. It's just something that's followed you and thankfully you're conditioned for it and can handle the heat. Um, but I don't want to fight with these Cyrax. Um, all I really want to do right here is clarify the nature of the glory hole sales. And it's true. It's, I mean, I'm not going to lie that uh, Siznak and I did make, uh, I'm not sure what you consider to be a lot of money. I guess that's all subjective. But yeah, we did profit from your likeness. Um, but we did so legally. You signed a contract with the Bunder Boys. Uh, I had purchased it. It was a 360 all-encompassing deal, but that is the past. The past is the past, as you always say, and, you know, whether or not you want to make money from your likeness, you can, and we can. If you don't want to, you don't have to. I'm not trying to control your music. I'm not trying to control your art. I'm not even trying to sell glory holes anymore, but the option is up to you. The option is 100% up to you if you'd like to. Uh, if you feel that it's something that is perverse and not something you want to be associated with or a part of, then you don't have to be. We, we don't have to go down that road. Uh, the ball is in your court. I would love to uh, have a conversation with you. You know how to get a hold of me. You can reach out to me whenever you'd like. I don't know why you banned me from your little stream yard thing. Um, but, but uh, yeah, the truth is we, we did sell some glory holes. And, you know, I'm not going to deny that. Um, if you'd like to sell some more, we can. It's a dirty business. It's definitely a dirty business. Uh, no, no doubt about that. But, you know, if you don't want to sell glory holes, you don't have to. If you do, we can. I'm not trying to control you as an artist. You can do whatever you want as an artist. Um, I don't think it's fair to blame me for your shortcomings or your deficits. I've done nothing but promote you. And, you know, if you want to be upset with me, you can be. But... Um, you know, if you want to be forgiven, Cyrax, uh, then you, you have to be consistent. You can't be a hypocrite. Um, I bought your contract, fair and square. It was a 360 all-encompassing deal. That included merchandise as well as your music. But I don't even want to make money off of you. I'd rather be your friend. Um, you know, so I, I don't know why you kicked me off your streamer thing, but that's fine. Um, we... What do you have against selling glory holes? I don't, I don't understand that. I really don't understand why you'd be against selling adult products for anonymous, discreet oral sex. Uh, we would purchase them from gloryholetogo.com. It's a really fine manufacturer. It's a one-man operation. Um, I believe that all products have a lifetime warranty. And if you stain the duck cotton wool, which is really just a high-quality material, you can ship it to them. All you have to do is pay shipping and they'll clean it for free. Um, they're coming out with a new prototype called the Standing Coffin, which is a portable glory hole. And why not make money from it, Cyrax? There are videos of you shoving things up your ass. There are videos of you doing all sorts of things that are, you know, in some people's opinions, probably more depraved and degrading than anonymous lovemaking between two parties, most commonly gay men. Uh, I mean, your brother was gay. 
you know, I don't, I don't know Cyrax. I, I, I just want to be friends. And if you don't want to sell any more glory holes, you, we don't have to. If you want to, we can. I mean, I could be a dick about this, but I'm not going to be. I just want to be your friend. And if you can't forgive me, then I don't think you deserve forgiveness because you have to practice what you preach. So ultimately, that's my message to you, Cyrax. Uh, unfortunately, I have to go right here, but I wanted to get this out to you and uh, see what you had to say about it. Um, you can be operational at your blessing. It'll probably take one to one and a half months to get the licensing down, but we can do it, Cyrax. You know, I, I know that you're with your... I, I don't know, Cyrax, I just think we can do it. I don't know why you'd have any problem with it, but if you do have a problem with it, we don't have to. It's, it's your call at the end of the day, so. A while later, Chance began another stream kicking it off by thanking Siznak for paneling up and having a conversation with him. He then asserted that Marty was acting fake and that he had no desire to resume their friendship, threatening to sue Marty for using his likeness to turn a profit. He also claimed that Marty had never purchased his contract from the Bender Boys. This was a lie, as video proof of said purchase can be seen in part two of this very documentary series, about three minutes in. Chance, for some reason, claimed that someone by the name Maximum Overdose had purchased said contract rather than Marty. Chance also claimed that he was sick of being used as a pawn and a puppet, making it known that no one owned him or his music. He then discussed the merchandise sold featuring both he and his ex-girlfriend Heather Kraut's likenesses, saying that he was owed money, money which he had unknowingly just declined by turning down Marty's offer of friendship, as he had supposedly not noticed that Marty had offered to cut him in on the money. Chance also said that he was sickened by Marty supposedly pretending to be nice to him. Um, as you guys know, from the last live stream, Siznak came forward and admitted some stuff. And Siznak, I do appreciate you coming forward. Even though you did lie about some shit, I still appreciate you coming forward and speaking the truth. Uh, but my issue is not with you right now. Marty, my issue is with you. Why the fuck would I want to be friends with someone like you that's fake? I watched your video. And to be honest, you were being fake nice. And I'm telling you right now, if you ever, and I do mean ever, think about using my likeness or face or anything that I own on any of your garbage, me and my family will sue you. You do not own my likeness. That contract that the Bender Boys got, you didn't buy that. You did not buy that from them. The person that bought it was Maximum Overdose. And guess what? He terminated that contract. He destroyed it. Don't believe me? Contact him yourself. Contact Maximum Overdose yourself. Contact him your freaking self and ask him. No one owns me, Marty. I own me. I'm tired of being a pawn. I'm tired of being a puppet. And I'm tired of being lied to. And Marty, while you're at it, why don't you come clean and tell the fucking truth, man? Why don't you tell the truth about how you not only sold my face on shower curtains. Why don't you come clean and tell them how you did that with, with Heather as well. Tell the truth, Marty. Tell the fucking truth. You did it to me and you did it to Heather. And you think this is funny? It's not. You should be ashamed of yourself. 
And to be honest, yeah, you do owe me money for all that. But I'm not going to come at you about it because I already know I'm not going to see a damn red cent of it. But I am going to tell you right now, Marty, if you do anything to get in my way again and stop something that I am trying to build, if you get in my way again and try to stop me making a living doing things that I love to do, or try to defame me, slander me, or try to do anything, and I do mean anything, that makes me look bad in the public eye. Like I said, me and my family, we are going to come after you, and we will sue you. The fact that you could be nice to my face, but sit there and be fake nice in a video, it's sickening. It's almost as sickening as what Siznak said and when those people sent that sex toy to my house the other night. I'm tired of being everyone's fucking punching bag. I'm tired of being everyone's cash cow. You know what I really want to do with my life, Marty? You really want to know? I want to sit here and do my artwork and do my gaming for a living and enjoy my life. I am 31 years old. I know I've still got a lot of time left on this earth, but I'd rather not sit here and waste it trying to find a way to make money. I want to be able to enjoy my life doing things that I love to do. Another stream began shortly following this, with Chance again thanking Siznak for their earlier interaction. He again made it clear that he and his music would not be owned before thanking Siznak for calling him a musical genius. He then denied Siznak's claim that he was a cash cow before exiting the room for several minutes, supposedly to quote, check on his coffee. When Chance returned, he addressed the chat asserting that money was not needed to succeed as an independent artist, using Tom McDonald and Ryan Upchurch as examples, citing their use of digital distribution platforms. Well, first off to Sisnak, I would like to say thank you for giving me at least some of the answers that I was looking for. You know, I do appreciate you giving me some of the answers I was looking for. But there is one thing that I do need to say. And that is when I first started music, I had no intention and nor will I ever have the intention of letting my music or my creativity or my likeness or myself be owned. You know, my music is my music and what I do is on me. I don't want anybody owning what the fuck I do. Like, if I put out music, I want to put out music my way. I want to be able to have control over it 100%. I don't want somebody sitting there saying, oh, you released this song, but we own it. That's not what I want. If I release a song, I want to be able to own it 110%. Like, I'm not a cash cow. I do thank you for stating that, yes, I am a musical genius, and I do appreciate that. I truly do appreciate that, but I'm not a cash cow. I'm a freaking human being, and I deserve to be treated as such, man. I deserve to be treated as a human being and not some sort of 
you know, cash cow. And I'm not going to be held responsible for your lack of being able to get off your ass and actually create something. Like, I'm not going to be controlled. As a matter of fact, I'm going to prove that here in just a few minutes. I'm going to be right back. Let me go check on my coffee, and once I grab it, I am going to do some stuff and show you that I'm not going to be a cash cow. Actually, no, it doesn't. Nowadays, it don't take money to be independent, and I can easily prove that. So give me a minute, and I'll prove how. Now, let's, let's get down to the main topic here. First, I do want to address uh, Wacky Jack, whatever your name is. I want to address what you said about not being able to be an independent artist without money. See, and this is a very common misconception. All right, this is actually a very common misconception that people have about not being able to make it as an independent artist. Ryan Upchurch. Tom McDonald. Two very good examples of an independent artist. They started it with no money. You know what they use? They use digital distribution platforms. They make a name for themselves and use digital distribution platforms such as CD Baby, um, Amuse, which is one that I went through in the past. You know, they use, they use various digital distribution platforms to get their stuff on the iTunes, Spotify, Apple Store, the Apple Play Store, Google Play Store, Amazon, basically anywhere where you buy music, they get their music onto that shit. And actually, no, they did not. Tom McDonald did not have a single cent to his name. Tom McDonald did not have backing, and neither did Ryan Upchurch. Neither of them had financial backing. Matter of fact, at one point, Tom McDonald was actually homeless. They didn't have financial backing. They did not have the financial backing to get them going. Later that night, a somber chance went live to thank his Twitch viewers for showing him love since his move to the platform. He then claimed that this would be yet again, his final video, expressing his hope that the trolling would stop if he stopped streaming. He then referenced his exposure as a predator, feigning an apology before blaming the incident entirely on Kate, or Masshole Reports, the person who had exposed him. He said that he had learned from his mistakes, which he hadn't, and that he hoped Kate had learned from hers, despite her having made no mistakes. He then expressed hopefulness, that he could be forgiven for his predatory actions, and that he would not let it happen again, as he had, quote, learned what to look out for, showing that he felt no remorse for contacting minors, but instead felt remorse that he had fallen for a catfish. I do want to say thank you to all my supporters that, you know, have supported my jump over to Twitch, where I found a community of amazing people. Um... I definitely do appreciate all the love I've gotten over there. But... I do want to say one thing. And this is going to be my final video, period. I'm making this video in hopes that all this crap that I've had done to me will 
finally stop. Um, I know that because of certain things that happened, I got put in a bad situation. And I know that I can't control anyone's actions, but I can only control my own. And some of the things I did on this platform were not necessarily the best. And I know that, you know, I can't control what the other person did to me. And I know that I was not thinking when I said what I said, or not what I said, but what I did. I know that I was not in the right mindset at that time because I had been so hurt before by people. And I was going through a lot and I wasn't thinking very clearly. When I committed the acts that I did. But to everyone out there, I want to say that I'm sorry for my actions. I truly am sorry for my actions and what I did. Should they have happened? No. But they did. And I just hope that you guys understand that when I'm, when I did what I did, I was not in a good mindset. I honestly don't know what was going through my head. I don't understand it at all myself, I just, I don't understand what kind of mindset I was in. All I know is that it wasn't a good one. And I just want to say that I'm sorry for what I did and for my actions. And I hope that the person that you know, entrapped me and lured me in. I hope that that person learns from their mistakes. I hope that they don't do this to anyone else ever again. But most importantly, most importantly, I do hope that one day down the line, you guys can forgive me for my transgressions and what I've done. Were those actions right? No, they weren't, but, but they happened. And I understand that a lot of people are very upset by that, and that's very understandable. All I can say is that I'm sorry. And all I can do is make sure that it does not happen again. That's all I can do is make sure that it does not happen again. Because from now on, I'm going to be more aware. I'm going to be more alert. I'm going to be more on top of things. I'm going to be more cautious of the people that I hang around. And that I talk to. Um, I actually learned a lot from this experience. I learned how far some people are willing to go to do harm to others, but I also learned what to look out for
Chance kicked off September 24th by addressing William Gloryhole, insulting him multiple times and claiming that he had been falsely blamed for things that he had literally done. This was of course just hours after his 158th final video. After calling William a homophobic slur multiple times, he said that he wanted to tell the truth and turned his attention to Music Biz Marty, who he claimed had started the trolling that now controlled his life. He asked for his cut of the money Marty had supposedly made from merchandise bearing his likeness, saying that Heather, his ex-girlfriend, was also owed money from these endeavors. He then turned his attention to Siznak, who he had previously acted thankful toward, insulting him multiple times and calling him jobless, despite having never held employment himself. Chance asserted that he was sick of being called a predator, stating that he was not one and that he would not be reiterating this point. He then immediately reiterated this point. I'm here to speak on a little bitch ass William Glory Hole and his little fuck buddies who want to place blame on me for every motherfucking thing. I mean, I'm here to speak on that. William Glory Hole, you need to go fuck yourself, my dude. You seriously need to go screw yourself, you stupid piece of fucking shit. I am no longer taking the blame for what you motherfuckers did to me. And you know what? I'm honestly sick of it. I'm sick of being the one to blame for everything that you guys did to me. I'm not taking the blame for you motherfuckers anymore. And yes, I'm pissed, and rightfully so. Because after last night, I've been thinking about a lot of motherfucking shit, you douchebag little pricks. And let me tell you, it's about goddamn time somebody went off in your fucking faggot asses. It's about damn time somebody went off on you motherfuckers and told you the goddamn truth. Well, guess what? I'm going to be that motherfucker to tell you the goddamn truth. Marty, starting with you, motherfucker. Starting with you. You're the whole reason all this garbage started, man. You're the whole fucking reason all this shit started. It started back in the day with you trying to fucking troll me. That's how all this shit started is with you wanting to fucking troll me and you thinking that you're ha 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 Mr. Funny Guy. Well, fuck you, you douchebag motherfucker. Especially after last night when I found out that what you did wasn't a motherfucking joke and that it was real. Selling merchandise with my face on it without telling me or getting my permission. Where's my cut of the pay, motherfucker? That's my face on that merch that was on that merchandise. That was Heather's face that was on that merchandise. Where's our cut of the money, motherfucker? Where's our cut of the money, bitch? Where's our cut of the pay? Because let me tell you, motherfucker, something. Sis bitch, or should I say, Sisnack the wannabe rapper, aka the fucking pussy that's too fucking lazy to get a goddamn job? Where's our cut of the money, bitch? Where's my cut of the money? Where's Heather's cut of the money? If anybody owes us anything, y'all motherfuckers owe us money, especially me. And another thing that I'm really getting fucking tired of. Is every motherfucker out there saying that I'm a fucking chomo, that I'm this, that I'm that, that I'm a pedo. No the fuck I am, motherfuckers. I'm not going to fucking say it again. I'm not a pedophile. I'm not a child molester. I'm not a chomo. I'm not whatever the fuck you think I am. Because see, what you dumbass little fuckbags seem to fail to realize is this. Okay? Y'all fail to realize something. Masso reports approached me first. I not once at all 
Not ever once did I ever go seeking her out. Not long after this, an angry stream began in which Chance said that he had finally discovered the true culprit behind his misery through his search for truth. The mastermind was apparently none other than Paul Caston, or Boogeyman the Clown, a real-life friend of Chance's whom he had been friendly with as recently as two weeks prior. He claimed that Paul had blamed Chance for Candle's faked suicide in 2018, something which he had legitimately caused by stalking Candle, and that Paul had spread the supposed misinformation on the internet, which had in turn led to the trolls discovering Chance. He began to repeatedly insult Paul, berating him for his weight and yelling that he had done nothing to help Chance, who had apparently forgotten that he was a grown man who claimed that he could handle himself. After blaming Paul for everything bad in his life, despite most of it being his fault, Chance showed a juggalo wristband to the camera, saying that he would no longer, quote, rep the wristband, implying that he and Paul had shared a bond through the music of the insane clown posse. He then ripped the band off and angrily threw it at the wall, proudly showing off his now bare wrist to the viewers. You know, I've been looking and looking and looking for answers as to why I've been attacked, as to why I've been trolled the way I was. And guess what? I finally got my motherfucking answer. I got my answer as to how all this fucking started. And it started with you, Pokemon the Clown. It started with you. It started when Kano pretended to kill herself. What did you do? When she pretended to kill herself, what did you fucking do? Hmm. You sat there and blamed me. And then ran and told every motherfucking body on the goddamn internet that it was me. And what did they do? They began attacking me. Over and over and over Now, yes, I get that you didn't come forward right away because of what Candle did. Because of how Candle threatened your child's life. And I get that. But instead of punking out like a bitch, you should have manned the fuck up and fucking done something about it. You should have manned up and done something. You should have manned up and told her to piss off and kick rocks. But instead, you punked out like a bitch. Instead, you punked out like a little bitch and let me take the ball for something that I didn't even do. You already know who he is. He's that fat, overweight little bitch that I had on panel. Twice. A.K.A. Paul. That motherfucker. The one that was dating Heather. Paul, I'm calling you the fuck out, you fat, overweight little bitch. Because of you, motherfucker, I've had to spend months and months being ridiculed for shit that I didn't do. You want to know what this motherfucker did? I'll tell you what he did. For those of you that don't know, Candle Smith pretended to kill herself. Okay, Candle pretended to kill herself. 
and then told Paul to blame me. And what did he do? I got fucking blamed, and I had to suffer through months and months and months of being attacked. Being harassed and bullied by the very fucking people that I once stood beside. I used to rep this family with every fiber of my very motherfucking being. I used to rep the Juggalo family with every fiber of my fucking being. I used to rep that shit. But now, not no more. See this? I don't rep that anymore. And never fucking will. That evening, Chance joined Music Biz Marty's panel, ordering him to stop playing the music that he was listening to and launching into a rant about his Twitch account, which had apparently been hacked by trolls at some point during the day. Marty quickly let Chance know that he was the one behind the hacking, which immediately sent Chance into a rage. Marty, before Chance could really get going, mentioned that he had to hide Schmeckelcat in the chat, blaming this action on the fact that Schmeckel had supposedly stolen from him. Chance, at the mention of Schmeckel's name, angrily addressed him, berating him for quote, recording shit, but refusing to elaborate in any way. He was, in fact, referencing the fact that Schmeckel had recorded a phone call between the two in which Chance had divulged his supposed plans to visit Florida. Chance mentioned this briefly during part 46 of this documentary, while ranting about Axel having been an insincere friend. Marty repeatedly attempted to calmly discuss the Twitch predicament with Chance, who yelled and screamed over him, refusing to let him get a word in. Chance claimed, falsely, that Candle Smith had tried to have him killed two times, and then ordered Marty to stop making excuses, which he wasn't doing at all, having fully confessed to the hacking of Chance's account. Marty, cut the music. You can't have that, right? You get a fucking ass Marty, cut the music off. Hey, Sarax. Marty, let me tell you right now, bro. I have no real fucking qualms with you. I'm willing to put whatever bullshit beef we had in the fucking past. Right now, my issue is with you dumbass motherfuckers that think you can hack into my Twitch, come after my shit, and attack me and my family, and fabricate shit, and make it look like I did shit that I didn't fucking do. What are you talking about? Oh, you don't fucking know? I really don't. Oh, these mother... When I was live a little bit ago, these motherfuckers sat there, hacked into my Twitch, and... I know, I know about that. I know about the Twitch side. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yep. Now, I want to know who the fuck did it. Which one of you dumb motherfuckers did it? I did. Are you serious right now? Yes, sir. Be straight up honest with me, Marty. Be 100% because you and I both know that I know when you're lying. Tell me the fucking truth. Sorry, Rex, I can send you a screenshot from within your Twitch. Why? Why'd you do it? Sorry, X. No, okay. shut the fuck up. Why'd you do it? I'll tell you why. If you let me explain it. Um, There's no explaining shit. Just get to the goddamn point. Why'd you do it, motherfucker? Hang on. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta hide, hide shit to you. I gotta hide Schmeckle Cat. No, shut the fuck up. I, I ain't gonna shit to your fucking bitch ass. I gotta hide Schmeckle Cat because he's a thief. Here, one second here. One second. I gotta get rid of this guy really quickly here. He uh, he threw away our friendship over thirty dollars. It's pretty disgusting. I'll get to that later. Um, it's kind of sad. Hold on, hold on. Speaking on Schmeckle Cat. Yeah. Yo, Schmeckle, why the fuck you sitting there recording shit, motherfucker? You know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about, Schmeckle Cat. I think he's desperate. I, I think he's desperate for money. I believe he stole thirty dollars. Yeah, Marty. 
Despicable now, Mark, let me tell you right now, dude, you at no point in time had any right doing what you motherfucking did. You had no right doing that, motherfucker. None. I am not doing a damn thing to you. If anything, I was going after Cisnac because I was looking for the truth. Cisnac, you know, hold, on, hold on, no, let me fucking explain something here. You need to fucking sit down, shut up, and understand something. I confronted Cisnac for a very specific reason. So I can get my me. life back that I had a year and a half ago before I started getting attacked. So, I so wanted, oh, no, no, I wanted motherfucking answers. I wanted answers for everything so that I can cut ties with all the bullshit and get back to the life I had before all this started. And Marty, that ain't, and I'm not saying that like I told you, I'm not trying to be a fucking dick to you, but that includes you, man. That includes the shit that you do. Pass the pass. Shut the fuck up and listen. I've been trying to get my life back for a year and a fucking half, bro. A year and a goddamn half. I have been attacked. My been, life. No, shut up. I have been dehumanized. I have been belittled, beaten down, all by motherfuckers like you, like Massel reports. Like Sir, I did nothing to you. No, shut up. Shut up. You, you know I, have, I know. Shut up, Marty. I am tired of the bullshit. All I've ever tried to do was get my life back. That's all I've ever asked. What, what? a normal life. I never asked for this. What I didn't ask for what you did to me. I didn't ask for what Masso Reports did. I didn't even ask for what Cisnac did. He worked for I me. I didn't ask for any of that. I did not ask for any of that. But I don't even know. Shut up. Okay. I don't deserve to be treated the way you and everyone has treated me for the last year and a half. I almost died twice. Oh. Once. Because of my own will, because of what y'all put me through. You had a shark. Oh, so shut up! And twice because of that psycho bitch candle. I oh, was yeah. supposed to die when Paul came over here. Twice in a row, she That's tried to kill me. No, twice in a row, she tried to have me killed. Twice, and I'm tired of it. Y'all dumb motherfuckers need to get a life. And Marty, that includes you. You tried to kill King No, Taylor. shut up, motherfucker. I've had enough of your kids. mouth. No, I've had enough of your excuses. You tried to kill no, King no, Shut up, bitch. I've had enough of your fucking excuses, you little fuckbag. Okay. Stop making excuses. The stream rolled on, with Chance angrily demanding his and Heather's cut of the aforementioned merchandise money repeatedly using homophobic slurs toward Marty and other trolls, namely Kate and Cisnac. He asserted that he was sick of being dehumanized, using an impressively big word for someone of his limited intelligence. Eventually, Chance's online acquaintance Courtney joined the panel, attempting to convince Chance to allow Marty to respond, which he did not. After screaming and yelling at and insulting Marty for minutes on end, Chance then demanded Marty go after the trolls on his behalf, seemingly oblivious to how stupid this request was in his current situation. Chance then abruptly exited the panel. And no, shut the fuck up. I'm just trying to explain. No, shut up. Take responsibility for what you do, Marty. You don't take responsibility. You take responsibility for the glory holes. Yeah, well, guess what? Where's my cut of the pay, motherfucker? Where's my cut? Is that Where's what my money? That's my face on that shit. I never gave you permission. You did that on your own. So legally, I would have every right to come after you. Every yeah. right. Did Where's you my side of the money, motherfucker? Did you Where's read the contract? Money? Better yet. Better yet. Where's Heather's cut of the money? Where's her cut of the shit? What does she have to do with this? Oh, you owe her money too, motherfucker. What does she have to do with this? Shut up. You little fucking thieving little bitch. Are you married to her? Shut up, bag boy. Okay. Sit the fucking punk ass down and shut the fuck up. You need to shut up and sit down. Okay. No. Marty, I've had enough of being screwed over by motherfuckers like you. My entire life, I have been bullied by little bitches like you that think they can take advantage of me. 
And NASA reports, same goes for you, bitch. Same goes for you. And Sizak, that is especially. He was my employee. Oh, no, shut up, Marty. Take it up with me. Shut up, Marty. He doesn't have anything to do with this. Shut up. For me. Shut up. Okay. When I say shut up, I mean shut the fuck up. Right. And I mean it. Okay. I am not in the mood to be fucked over anymore. I have been taken advantage of by you, Sisnack, by everyone for a year and a half, and I'm sick of it. You signed all your rights. Up. I have been dehumanized. You should have read the contract. To I, the bought, fucking I bought the contract. Shut up. Shut up. I bought the contract. Shut up, Marty. All revenue. Shut your old faggot ass up, you old bitch. I ain't trying to hear your mouth. I've had enough of your mouth, Marty. You need to shut the fuck up and sit down. And honestly, you honestly do? You need to get a fucking life and quit the bullshit. I don't know who's in your ear talking, but you need to get away from that person. Hey, this Courtney. ain't you, bro. This ain't you, Marty, and you know it, man. What happened to the Marty that stood up for me? Correct. I was your friend. What happened to the Marty that I stopped selling glory holes? What happened to the Marty that stood up for Let me? Let Marty talk for a second. Like Cisnack. He won't do it. What no, shut up, Marty. What happened to the Marty that I fucking knew that went after people? I stopped selling no, glory holes. Up, Marty. I'm talking to you right now. Okay. What happened to the motherfucker that I knew that used to go after people like Mass Over Course? When did you I go after Mass Over Course? No, you say you're my boy. Where the fuck were you when everybody was dragging I'm me to hell and dehumanizing me? Where were you? Sorry, Where you're were not you? Marty answer. Not there. You let weren't Marty there, answer. Marty. He's, he's let Marty answer. Were there, Marty. You weren't there. Him. You didn't see the shit. You don't know what it's like to be dehumanized. You don't know what it's like to get put through what I've been put through for the last year and a half. You don't know what that's like. I, listen, you I can don't understand. So honestly, bro, you need to keep your damn mouth shut. And if you got any chance of making it right, you better do it real fucking fast. Because I swear to God, you know damn well, Marty, I have the power to call your ass out. And you know I'll make you look like shit. You, you know been. I will. You, you have been. know I'll make you look like Cyrax, shit. Let Marty respond. Cyrax, Cyrax. Cyrax. He's like it and go after these motherfuckers. Man the fuck up. Fucking do something. Stop sitting on your fucking ass and letting them do this to me. Get off your ass and do something. You got so much power. Do something that's not forgivable. Get off your fucking ass and do something then. Get off your goddamn ass and go after these fucking people. What do you want me to do? I've been harassed and attacked for the last seven months. And for what? How did Marty just attack you, though, Cyrax? How did Marty just attack you? What did he just do right now? Hey, Marty, you want to make shit right? Get off your fucking lazy ass and go after these motherfuckers. I'm tired of my life being attacked. I'm tired of not having the life that I used to have. What life? I used to have a fucking life. What life? I used to have a normal life before all this. So, Marty, you want to be a true friend? No, you want to be a true friend? Get off your fucking lazy ass and do something about these guys. I'm done with it. Sorry, what do you want Marty to do? Get off your ass and do something, Marty. What can I do? What what can he... Mm. With Chance gone, Courtney asked Marty what had happened to enrage Chance to this degree, a question which Marty disregarded in favor of instead discussing Schmeckelcat's theft. He claimed that Schmeckel had thrown away their friendship over $30. As this was being discussed, Chance rejoined the panel and immediately resumed his rant, this time appearing to be on the verge of tears, which you may recall he had previously claimed that his body was unable to produce. Courtney, managing to break in between screams, told Chance that he tended to put himself in the positions that he found himself in with trolls, which Chance immediately denied before bragging, despite supposedly being afraid for his life, about the fact that Candle had failed to kill him, insulting her multiple times in the process. They then began to discuss Marty's recent visit to Akron, with Chance claiming that he hadn't come outside to meet Marty because he was unsure of Marty's intentions. Marty brought up the thumbnail featuring Chance holding his decapitated head, 
which had sparked said visit in the first place, and Chance claimed that the photo was meant as a message to the trolls and not directed at Marty, despite the photo directly referencing Marty and Marty alone. Courtney, who had also had an experience with being trolled, urged Chance to just ignore the trolls, which Chance immediately discounted and refused to do. Courtney also attempted to remind him, since he had brought it up multiple times, that Marty had offered to pay him his cut of the merchandise money. Um, so, so what did you do that upset him to this point right now? Well, okay, first off, I want to say this really quickly. Um, I understand how uh, money can get in the way of friendships. Uh, just recently, uh, Schmeckle Cat was sent uh, $30 to send to me. Um, which, you know, I told the person who sent it, it's not necessary. It's totally not required. Um, Did you get money though? Did you get it? What do you think? I'm assuming if you're bringing it up, you didn't. No. And like, here's this guy who, uh, LARPs is a businessman, you know, on, on the, uh, up oh, here. Sorry, is back. I think there he is. Okay. All right. Sarex, Sarex, no, wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on. Let's talk. Marty, let's talk. Marty, you want, Marty, let's talk, you Sarex. Want to know. Hold on, Courtney. Marty, you want to know what you can do? You can start by helping to get these motherfuckers put in jail like they should have been a long fucking time ago. A long time ago. How are they going to go in jail? How are a they long gonna... time ago, these what? people should have been in jail. A long time ago, they should have been there. Marty, let me tell you. Yeah, you used to troll me, but let me tell you, man, you don't know what it's like to get dehumanized by people breaking into your shit, sharing private videos around, catfishing you, doing the Sorry, shit. Do you not all know that that's what that, that happens to you? Because you put yourself in a situation where it occurs. Here's the thing, though. I didn't put myself in that situation with Maslow Reports. She approached me first. You guys, Marty, before her, be, before she came on this panel, I didn't know who the fuck she was. I never even heard of her until that point. But and for her to do the shit, her that she did, for her to do the shit that she did, I lost my job. I lost my best friend. My fucking biological father lost his fucking job because of it. My whole life has been fucked up. Ever since then, I have been attacked. I've had death threats. I finally got fucking Paul to come out and say this shit about Candle. I was supposed to die twice because Candle wanted me dead because she knew that I knew the fucking truth. I'm not even supposed to be alive right now. I'm supposed to be dead. But guess what? Here the fuck I am, Candle, you dumb bitch. What are you going to do? Nothing. Because you're a punk-ass coward. You I'm sorry, I think you up. I think you hide. I mean, I was in Akron the other day, and uh, I don't know where you were. I wasn't talking about you, Marty. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. No, I was talking about Candle. And to be honest with you, Marty, I did not show up for a very good reason. Because Why? at that point, I did not know your intentions. To be honest with you, I didn't even know you were here till last yeah. till day. Did off. you think Marty was going to fight did, you? I did not, I didn't what did you, what did you think Marty was going to do? I like, don't know. I don't know. Honestly, given the stuff that he's done in the past, like well, not trying to be a big I was going to just take you to get a cheeseburger. Like, you don't know well, that. You know, what was I supposed to know, you know? Well, sir, so you, 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 you don't really know the picture of my bed. Like, you, you don't really you know, know like, the intentions. My head cut off and you're holding it up. And, and honestly, Marty. What does that mean, Sarax? What does that mean? What? Holding a picture of my beheaded head. Uh, you know, that wasn't very nice. I don't fucking know. You don't know. That was a recent thumbnail, though, Cyrax. He's being yeah. honest. That was a recent thumbnail that you had. Wait, you talking about the beheaded one? Yeah. yeah. Okay. That one, Marty, I sent you that guy's email. Yeah. I sent you that guy's <laughs> email. I sent but you, you still had it as a thumbnail, though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, you want to know why? Well, you put you it up again why? today. You want to know why? Because I am seriously sick and fucking tired of okay, being right. in the No, hold on. Let me fucking explain. Okay. I am sick to death and tired of being taken advantage of. I'm tired of being attacked. Honestly, I'm tired of being fucking bullied and nobody doing a goddamn thing to stop these motherfuckers. Well, so, Sarah, you know, when I you mean, do something you know, like that, that though, I finally you... stood the fuck up. I finally that's... stood the fuck up and said enough's enough. That's not Somebody standing up, though. You have to understand, Cyrax. 
when you no. have trolls and people fucking with you, you have to ignore it, dude. When you feed no, into it, it's kind of hard it's to do. Yeah, it's kind of hard to fucking do when they're. I know what it is, dude. It. Who are you telling? I deal with it every day. I deal with trolls yeah, every day. All in my people. work. Yeah, here's the thing, though. All in my family. Here's the thing, though. You don't have people sending fucked up shit to your fucking house. Yes, I do. do. <laughs> yes, I do. But every do fucking day, dude. Do. Do, you, do you ever every have Every day, I do. Do you ever have motherfuckers driving by your goddamn house threatening to fucking kill you? I have no, them threatening you know. my work. I have them calling my work and threatening my work every fucking no, guess day. What? You will have them driving by your fucking house literally. If right they were close enough thing. to me, I'm sure they would do it. The I'm sure they would. Yeah. Sure. I know they will. Like I said, Marty, if you want to fix this, you need to fucking man up and you need to help me get these motherfuckers put in jail. Oh, where so they right. fucking so you're mad at Marty for not teaming up? He's not, like, again, you understand, Cyrus. Oh, no. no, I'm still, honestly, I'm still mad at the fact and I'm not trying to be a dick when I say this and rightfully I am upset. But, dude, what you did with that glory hole shit? That was, fuck, dude. That was he up. offered you money on it. I witnessed it. He offered you part of the money and you didn't want it. Chance answered Courtney's claim about the merchandise money, saying that he had refused to take it because he was raised better than that. He said this just minutes after screaming at Marty to pay him said money, showing that he was, in fact, not raised better than that. The decapitation thumbnail was again brought up with Courtney telling Chance that he was wrong for posting it. Chance immediately denied any wrongdoing and quickly changed the subject. Marty repeatedly attempted to respond, but was, as usual, screamed over. Courtney again attempted to tell Chance that she related to the trolling, saying that the trolls regularly called her children and her place of employment, but saying that trolling was par for the course when you opened yourself up to the internet. Chance, of course, disregarded this and kept yelling, eventually abruptly exiting the panel for good. You want to know why I don't do that? Because I was actually raised better than That's that. That's why I stopped. I don't do business with scumbags, That's Marty. why I and so honestly, I stopped Marty, for you. Honestly, Marty, given the shit that you've done to me in the past, I stopped for you. Marty, what happened to the you that me and our mutual friend, what happened to that, Marty? What happened to the Marty that actually ignored what these motherfuckers were putting in his ear? You had, a, you, you had my head. You were, you were holding on to my head. I I that was literally you your last you thumbnail, though. Marty, like, I that, explained that's... to you. I explained to you many times about that shit. So you, so you posted the thumbnail to be like, hey, Marty, here's the bad guy. But by you posting the thumbnail, you're embracing it and you're advertising it. Actually, no, I'm not. That right there, it was deeper than that. That the when I first posted that thumbnail, that was me saying, "Hey, I'm done taking this bullshit. I'm going after every motherfucker that's ever wronged me." I you're going after I Marty, but now on this panel, you're asking Marty for help. That thumbnail right. is attacking Marty, and right now you're asking for help from him. It's difficult. Oh, Which right. side is it? No. You know what I really fucking want? I want the life back that I lost no, a year no. and No, hold on. I lost <laughs> my life okay. a year and a fucking half ago. The normal life that I fucking had. And Marty, I hate to say it, but you're fucking part of that. You may not That's have started it. But you know, no, you may not have started yeah. it. But you, you still it. instigated it. You still instigated it by doing what you motherfucker did. So yeah, I do have a right to speak on that. I'm sure. not gonna keep silent about that. I'm not trying to attack you. I'm not trying to bash on you. But what I'm saying is that Marty, you're yelling at Marty. Not here. Not going fighting your battle. Yeah. fucking got here, dude. That's part You're of the fucking reason. And I'm trying to get my fucking life back. And here you are doing this shit. You I'm here, Marty hasn't even I'm been here. around, Cyrax. No. So. Well, Marty, I am here fighting my life every fucking day, trying to get my shit back to where it once was. I have been and fighting. Marty I hasn't can't... instigated no, that. I have been fighting day in and day out. You think it's easy to ignore motherfuckers? No, it ain't. It's not, not dude, but you have to. to. No, when they go to the level that they do with me, that's not easy to ignore. I understand that, Cyrus, but that's what they want. They want this. Dude, I lost my best friend in my job because <laughs> you they, you I have to ignore that. 
That's not an ignorable thing. These motherfuckers go after me. I tried to leave. Cyrax, I understand how. I tried to leave YouTube. I understand. I tried to leave YouTube peacefully, and guess what they did? They went over to where I was at, started following me, started attacking me, and then what did they do when I was live? It's part for the course, dude. If you're on this platform, that's what happens, dude. It doesn't matter. It's still fucked up, and it's uncalled for. It's uncalled for. When you're a fucking YouTube celebrity like you are, dude, you have to fucking roll with it. Did you ever stop the things that maybe, maybe she's gonna jump? I mean, I mean, this, I mean, did you ever stop the thing that maybe I didn't ask to be drugged into this shit? I never no asked. No one to asks drugged. to be trolled no, online. I never asked. Guys. I no never one asked to be asked. I never once in my whole time ever asked to be trolled. I, I never understand asked. that, but when you're on this platform, that's what happens. It doesn't fucking matter. It doesn't it mean doesn't it's right. Matter. It's what happens. No. When it, when they take it beyond what it should be. When they, dressed, they call they my kid. They no, call my kid. Like, no, this is what I'm about. No, when like, they drag your real life into that shit, that's what happens way to every day walk. to me, dude. Bro, just got fucking got ignore it. I got made on my ass. It, Dude, they call my kids. They call my child. These trolls call my kid, dude. I get it. It doesn't matter. That's not right. It's wrong, but it's not going to stop. No, do you know how many motherfuckers look at me weird now because of people like Masshole? A lot more than you know. And it fucking sucks. Why'd you get strangers that I was once friends with are now giving me dirty ass looks? Guess why? Because of all the bullshit well, I've been doing. Then, Cyrax, I, never asked, asked, I never asked for this shit. I never asked. You're on a platform that that's what causes it. Doesn't fucking Cyrax. matter what platform I'm on. It's I good. never asked for this. I this never is asked. What happens. This attack. is what happens. No. Courtney, I'm telling you right now, you need to stop because you don't understand what you don't understand. I understand more than you know, Cyrax. Yeah, I am doxxed every day. I have people that send to me every day. They call my work. They call my work. I actually have a job. You don't know. You don't I know more than you will ever understand. No, I don't know about that. understand how many nights of sleep I have lost over worrying about my family. My family got attacked. I got attacked. My fucking daughter gets called, dude. I, I have a child friend. that gets called. You can't Wake just up. If you're on this platform, it's hard for the course, no, dude. No, no, You can't just ignore losing your best friend over some bullshit that a little bitch fucking did to you. Now, guess what? I'm being labeled as something that I'm not. I can't ignore that. Sorry, I was raised better than that. You can't ignore that shit. You shouldn't ignore that shit. That's Cyrus, a motherfucker. Cyrus, listen, listen. No, Do you, you understand what? also? You know what, Marty? You know what, Marty? You know what, Marty? Cyrus, Cyrus. You know what, Marty has know. had his Hold family called. He's had his family attacked. Do you not something. know this? You know. No, Marty's not attacked just as much car. as you. Knock it off. Marty, I'm telling you right now, you want to fucking do something, you Except set those motherfuckers put in jail, and you let me know when the goddamn job is done, because I'm done with this. All I want is my fucking They won't go back. to jail, dude. That's all I no. want is my life back. No. I'm out. Marty, you know what to do to make shit right. How? I don't know. Immediately following his appearance on the panel, Chance began a stream of his own to continue yelling about the trolls. He claimed that his name had been forged by the Bender Boys on his contract in 2019, which it had not. He then questioned the chat angrily, asking why none of them made videos to support him. He shouted out his friend Clint, who had supposedly made videos supporting him, and claimed that he would be banning his viewers and members of chat if they didn't follow suit. Quick reminder, this, at the time, was a 31-year-old grown man. He repeatedly insulted his own audience for not fighting his battles for him, even going as far as to urge a chatter to end their own life, showing his dedication to his supposed anti-bullying stance. You guys really want to fucking do this? You really want to fucking do this? 
Marty, trust me when I say you and your little friends from last year don't want to do this game. Paul, you don't want to do this game. And all you motherfuckers that are sitting there blowing up my phone saying I signed the contract, you don't want to go toe-to-toe with me, motherfuckers. Because I know what the fuck you little bitches did. You sat there and forged my name on a contract just so you can attack me. And let me tell you right now, Let me tell you right now, I'm out for motherfucking blood now. And let me tell you right now, if somebody doesn't start fucking standing up for me and start defending me, a lot of motherfuckers are going to start getting banned. Y'all say you're my true supporters, but are you? Are you really? Because if any of you motherfuckers were real supporters, you'd be making a video saying something to these motherfuckers. But no, you motherfuckers are too damn chicken shit. And yes, that includes you, Firefly. Well, I'm saying, my boy Quentin here, he's already spoken out. He's already spoken on these guys. He's already said something. It seems like he's the only one that has the goddamn balls to do anything. Oh, you ain't miss shit, Clint. You're just in time, brother. Let me tell you right now. This motherfucker right here, Clint. He's the only one who has had the balls to fucking make a video and stand up for me. He's the only motherfucker that's actually made a video going against these bitches. None of you other motherfuckers have got the goddamn balls or the goddamn guts to do a damn thing. And Marty, shut your mouth. I've heard enough of your mouth to last me a lifetime. I'm tired of being pushed around. No Ouija lock, you're finished, bitch. So fuck you and your friends. Fuck all you motherfuckers that ain't done a damn thing to stand up for me. Fuck all you that ain't stood up for me. Y'all claim... That y'all real supporters, where's the support at? Where the fuck were you when I needed you guys? When I needed you guys to stand up and fight back, where were you? Where were you? Oh, I'll tell you where you were. Not here. Not standing up for me. Not defending me. Not making videos going against these people. And John Hagee, you and your little bitch friends can kick rocks, slit your throats, and die, bitch. I'm tired of being held back. I'm tired of being attacked. Angela, you're fine. You're fine, Ange. I'm talking about all these other motherfuckers that are not mods that sit there and say they support me. But yet, I don't see shit. I don't see shit. I don't see anybody standing up for me. I don't see anybody going against Marty, against John Hagee. Against Masshole, against fucking goddamn William Glory Hole. I don't see you motherfuckers up in Marty's stream fucking saying something, putting a stop to this. I don't see anybody standing up and doing something. A while later, Chance, experiencing post rage clarity, went live in the dark, appearing to be crying the tears that he claimed he was unable to produce. He apologized to Courtney, 
for his earlier outburst and explained tearfully that he didn't ask to be trolled, asserting his desire for a positive community in his online space. Chance said that he only listened to others and was never listened to. He said this just an hour after screaming over two people for 30 minutes straight and not listening to a word either of them said. He then listed the positive aspects of his life that had supposedly been lost as a result of the trolls, claiming that he now got weird looks from his neighbors whenever he exited his home. He also falsely claimed that his neighbors used to give him hugs and regularly visit his home prior to the trolling. Courtney, if you're watching this, I do want to say that I'm sorry for going off on you, but there's something that you do need to understand. There's something that you seriously need to understand. I did not ask to be famous. I never wanted to be famous in this way. I never asked for this. You know what I wanted? I wanted to build up a community on my own of positive, like-minded people that weren't trolls. I wanted to build a positive community of people that I could be proud to say that I know. I never asked for this level of fame. I never wanted this kind of fame, ever. I never wanted this. And they got some points where they go too far. They have seriously gone way too fucking far. You want to know why? Because I'm done listening. I have listened to so many motherfucking people and no one wants to fucking hear me out. I have listened so many fucking times to people, yet no one wants to fucking hear what I have to say. No one fucking wants to listen to me and what I'm going through. I have listened and listened and listened and listened. Well, maybe it's goddamn about time that somebody fucking listens to me and does something about this shit. You know, there comes a point where there comes a point where things go way too far. And these people have gone way too fucking far. I lost my whole life in a matter of a year and a half. In a year and a half, I lost everything. I lost my best friend. I lost my job. I lost everything. I am now being labeled as a pedophile when clearly I'm not. I get weird looks from my neighbors as I walk down the street now. The same people that used to give me hugs when I would walk down the street and ask how I'm doing. The same ones that just a mere year and a half ago would always stop by and ask how I'm doing. And now I just get dirty looks. You really don't understand what it's like to be in my position. If you've lived in my position, if you were in my position for even one day, then you would understand. But you don't know what it's like to have your whole career be held back because motherfuckers want to sit there and screw you over. I have had everything ripped away from me. Everything. My music career. My 
my athlete career doing sim racing. I've had everything ripped away from me. And just tonight, I had my Twitch ripped away from me. Just tonight, I had my Twitch ripped away from me. I literally had to go in and shut my fucking Twitch down because of these motherfuckers. I had to shut my Twitch down because of these people. And trust me when I say you don't understand until you've been on the edge of suicide from being bullied so fucking much. I can't even post on my own Facebook anymore. I literally am afraid to even post on my own fucking Facebook. My own fucking Facebook where I hang out with my friends. I can't even post anything on Facebook now. Because I'm too fucking afraid of one of these motherfuckers going in and doing what they did to my Twitch.